subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, my name is Michelle Sanford. I am a developer engagement lead at Microsoft. Definitely the um, AI learning path. So there's two exams in that certification pathway. You can do AI fundamentals, which is the AI 900, followed by the AI 102, which is the AI engineer. I think it's a really practical pathway because all of the questions in the fundamentals are, uh, here's a technology, how would you use it in the real world? Or here's a real world scenario, uh, what technology would you use to solve it? And as you move from the fundamentals into the associate level uh, pathway, it, it just builds on the same content. And there's a really good component of it just now, which is all the open AI stuff and the chat GPT stuff, which is already there in the AI fundamentals learning path. So I would always say you want to start by reading the whole learning path all the way through. I don't think you need to do the labs to pass the fundamentals exams, but if it is your intention to work in that field in industry, then you do want to do the labs. You want to not just have a theoretical knowledge of what you have prepared for in order to pass the exam, but you want to be able to do the stuff. So do the labs too. I like to do a lot of practice questions and for many of the fundamentals exams now there is a free assessment which has about 50 questions which are the exact format that you will see in the exam. Some of the questions might be the same questions you will see in the exam so if you can find that free assessment from the Microsoft Learn page they're definitely worth doing and if you get above 80% then you're probably going to pass. Um, I also make notes when I'm studying those practice questions because it's not just about the questions, like the right answer for each question, but it's about the three other wrong answers for each question because those wrong answers for that question are the right answers for other questions. And so if you, you read and understand all of that and you make notes on it, I put my notes on my GitHub profile then uh, yeah, you help yourself and you help others in your community around you. That continuous learning mindset, um, which means that, you know, they're able to demonstrate that they didn't just get their degree or whatever was the ultimate qualification that they got before looking for work, but that they are continually studying, trying to stay up to date with current trends and information, maybe yeah, doing industry certifications like these Microsoft credentials that we've been talking about. Um, yeah, staying on top of what is changing and what's new, because if they just graduate with their degree, they're really graduating with tens of thousands of other people across the country who have the same degree and they're not able to differentiate themselves from other people. So continuous learning mindset is definitely something valued by industry. Uh, the other one would be that growth mindset. So we're looking for people who are open-minded, who bring a, a diversity of thoughts and ideas to the table. There's no point in employing someone who is thinking in exactly the same way as the six other people in the team. So you, you want to be able to show during an interview or even during your LinkedIn profile what it is that makes you different from the people around you, how you think differently, how you contribute differently, how you build things differently. I, I'm not saying we, we don't, you know, <laughs> We we want you to be a wild card and not a team player. But what I'm saying is bring your whole self to the table. Bring, bring who you are. Well, I, I like the, the learning paths on Microsoft Learn. As I say, the chat, GPT and OpenAI stuff is already in the AI fundamentals learning pathway, which, you know, considering what a hot topic it is and how it only just went GA maybe a couple of weeks ago, that's, you know, that's really great that the, the new content is already there. You can listen to podcasts, you can go to meetups, you can read, 
your stream on LinkedIn. So if you're connected to a lot of people in industry, in the field that you want to work in, reading their posts, reading their content, reading stuff that they share and commenting on it will feed you more of the content about that industry and those topics. Um, read the learning path, do the labs if you can, but don't stress about it if you can't. Uh, there's a lot of prep videos on YouTube that you can watch that are going to give you the, the best advice around passing those exams. Uh, don't overthink it for the, the fundamentals exams though. They are not meant to be uh, that hard. They are meant to uncover whether you have a fundamentals understanding across the, the whole solution. Um, I think as you go through those exams, if you answer every question, so if you don't know the answer to a question, guess at it. You can mark that question for review and come back to it at the end if you have time, but don't skip anything when you're going through the first time, just pick them and move on. Uh, you can apply logic and you can apply um, like keywords in order to pick the most likely answers and you have a very good chance of passing those exams. A lot of people before they've done their first exam put it off and put it off and put it off because they don't think they're ready. Uh, just do it so you know what you're up against, so you know how big the skills gap is. Most people do not fail their fundamentals exam if they've read the learning path. Um, if you do, rebook it and do it again. It's okay. Nobody will ever know that you have failed an exam. That's not recorded in your certification profile. The only thing that is recorded in your certification profile is your successes. And so there is no reason at all to hold back. Just do it. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.